Hi guys, I hope you're all well and that you're doing great. I'm back again with another video. Uh, this time I'm just gonna give you an update about what I'm doing in the Physician Associate course three months into the course and also I'm gonna be doing a, a few books or recommendations at the end of this video in terms of how to revise for it and my own experiences in terms of revision. Right, so as you guys know, I started uh, Physician Associate in September. I moved to Swansea literally a day before my course started and it was really stressful. I was very much anxious about like how I'm gonna do, how is it gonna be, am I really the person for this course? And these are the questions that you will experience and you will see, but, but by time it's gonna be better. So allow time to just come to you and anything that you're feeling allow it to be felt and everything's gonna get better eventually right so guys in terms of the course if i were to give you some like some sort of insight it is intense uh physician associate is basically a two years medical course medicine course basically so imagine all of those junks of conditions are summarized into two years and it's very much condensed and you have to just try and get your thoughts around it on how to revise for them because let me tell you one thing, I'm three months into the course and like there are 121, literally 121 conditions that I need to remember or to be able to recognize, whether in terms of um, investigation management or treatment. So I need to know all of like those three for every 121 conditions that I need to know. And that's so far three months into the course. Um, with our university, I don't know how it is with different universities, but with our university, we do blocks. So what what that actually means is four weeks of teaching uh, for each topic. So topic, for example, neurology, for example, respiratory, for example, cardiology. Our first month was cardio block. So we did all of the cardiology aspects in that block. I don't know what's wrong with my hair, just ignore it. Um, so we did that um, in the first month, which was intense. At the time, I was trying to find a way around how to revise. But in terms of what we did, again, first month was cardiology block. The second month was gastro block. And the third month was respiratory. In the first uh, month, I think it was, we had... Actually, it was two months down the course last month. We had a mock. Uh, so they're really trying to get keep us on our feet. Um, um, we had a um, mock exam, which was which was called a progress test, and um, we were given cases. So our tests are usually SBAs, and you'll have to basically see what your options are. And out of those, like let's say five options, which one is the best one? And uh, so we had that and then that's our written exam that you're going to have. And there is another exam that's called OSCE. So most of medical students will also know about OSCE because medical students also go through the OSCE exam. Uh, OSCE. OSCE exam uh, and so do we. So we had a OSCE mock as well, which was really interesting. And I'm going to get into that, into details about what I love and what I don't love about OSCEs as well. Um, maybe in another video because that is going to be longer. I have to explain so many things and my own experiences with pictures. I'll probably post that in another video. But yes, yeah, so in terms of the OSCE exam, uh, again, that was also a mock, which we did in the first, uh, after the first two months of our course, which was a month ago. And then uh, we were also in the, in the last three months, uh, doing placements. So we were doing GP placements every month uh, on the Tuesday. Um, my GP placement was at a GP surgery that I was supposed to go to and another video I'll post about that as well just so that I don't have to like put all of the information in one video. Uh, I'm sure there are so many people that are interested to know what Physician Associate is and I've already explained that in the previous video you can go and have a look at it. But um, in terms of what I've been going through in the past three months, this is basically it. Um, 
three months, three blocks, and revision, 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 GP placement, and two mock exams. And also, after a month after my mock exam, I have another mock exam in nearly 10 days. Um, actually, not a mock exam, it's a progress test, so the SBA questions, basically. I have the real exam, the written real exam, in 10 days and on top of that I have an assignment that I need to write an ethical assignment which is a week after that progress test so let's say in two weeks time this is how physician associate works you can tell that it's gonna be very intense and you have to be on top of everything and I'm gonna get into details on how I, I actually felt and my experience in uh, my true experience with the course so far um, but let's get into what I recommend once you start uh, for revision. So guys, when I started, as I mentioned, the first block, uh, which was cardiology, um, I was trying to find out how I should be revising. During biomed and also my master's, um, I, obviously for master's you're doing dissertation, that's completely different. So you don't have to do exams, we didn't have exams. But for biomed, when we had multiple choice questions and vast amount of topics to go through, obviously compared to physician associate, it was nothing. But um, back then I used to write things down. So I used to be that person that would make notes and colorful notes. And then sometimes I would actually write one thing like 100 times in a paper um, so that I could remember it. And also at the end of the biomed, I started making questions out of sentences of the textbook. And I was thinking, okay, you know what, at the end of the day, what else could it come up? What, what other multiple choice question could possibly come up other than the ones that I've already made? So, and it actually helped me. So I did actually ended up getting a really good mark from my biomed and revision was on point. However, when I started doing Physician Associate, I could not do it with the way I was doing it with Biomed. I couldn't revise the way I was doing back then. There was no way, no absolute way for me to do, let's say, 50 conditions of only cardiology and write them down again and again, or even make questions out of them, which was my first plan, because I was like, okay, this is going to be a lot. I'm not going to be able to write it down. I might as well make questions and make flashcards of that questions and, you know, read over the flashcards, which in fact, I spent about £60 just getting the flashcards from Amazon and I bought like packs of flashcards for the whole year and I made the biggest mistake in my life because they also don't work. So you're going to be writing and writing and writing takes time with Physician Associate, you don't have time. Um, and I know I might sound really overwhelming, but this is my true experience. You do not have time. And especially if, like, uh, I was very much lucky, my university is funded. So I don't have to worry about that side of it to pay them back. Um, but if you, like, if you have a part-time job, like, you're going to find it difficult if you go with the way that I was revising. So I started thinking about this, that how am I going to actually revise? How are medical students doing it? Although medicine is five years or four years, and that's plenty of time to go through everything. Uh, although it's difficult and they go more specific into like the depth and pathophysiology, we don't go through that. We go through the, physio um, we go through the pathophysiology in a bit, uh, well, a little bit. And we go through the management of the disease more than... Um, the actual underlying cause, um, which is again, it's something that you have to do independently to be able to understand the, the condition. And that's another thing I need to talk to you about. So as I mentioned, I uh, couldn't do the flashcards. Um, that wasn't working for me. I couldn't write anything down. Like I it just, I felt so overwhelmed. And every day we had like five lectures and that's five conditions. And I'm completely behind everything. And that's, this is how I felt. I felt like I'm completely behind and I was so demotivated and so scared that I wouldn't feel like studying. And that was my coping mechanism of not wanting to study because I was already so much behind. Um, so I started doing some research actually. And uh, on YouTube, I was watching so many videos on how medical students are revising because 
I feel like um, you need to have an active plan when it comes to revision, especially with physician associate. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have a plan, you're not going to be able to do it. And you need to know how many conditions you're supposed to be revising for during for, for your exam. Um, and how you're revising it, it's really important because you cannot revise for a condition and then forget it like and think that you know it because you wouldn't know it unless you go back to it. And this is where the repetition comes in. So thank, thank to God and thank to Ali Abdul. Honestly, like without him, I wouldn't have been able to do it the way I am doing it now for my exam. I think I would have failed already. Um, for my mock exams, um, I did well. Uh, I was happy with the way I did. So, and this is all thanks to what I use, the software that I use for my revision, which was Anki. So most of the people probably know about Anki if you're a medical student, but if you're not, if you're not, you wouldn't know what it is and you might think very overwhelmed about how to use it and stuff. But there are plenty of videos, especially Ali Abdul's videos on Skillshare that you can go on subscribe and you can just watch them uh, within a day. And that's what I did. So Thanks to Ali Abdul and thanks to my best friend Christina as well. She basically was the first person that told me about Anki and she diverted me towards Ali Abdul's videos and he did all of the information about how to use Anki, Anki and um, that was basically that software saved my whole time and life and uh, believe it or not I'm studying I'm on top of the things that I should be on top of and I've catched up with so many things and um, I'm getting ready for my my uh, exam. On top of that, I'm also doing a part-time, full-time job. Um, not both together, but what I mean is a part-time, but I'm doing it full-time. Like with progress tests and stuff, if you want to go through the conditions in terms of management, well, in investigation management and treatment, I think Anki is the best software. And I'll go into more details about what this is, but it's basically a software that does your questions. You make your, you can make your own questions. I personally made decks of questions based on decks of topics and just went through the matrix that we were supposed to learn um, and made the topics for each condition in Anki and I keep going through them and review them. And what it does, Anki is, um, it, 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 it's formed in a way that you can say whether you found the question easy or you found it hard. And that question will be repeating itself in a few days time, uh, depending on how hard you found it, basically. So it might not make sense unless you actually go and watch the videos and try and see like if you like just watch the tutorial. That's that for the progress test and also for the OSCE, I also recommend Anki as well. Um, in terms of, for example, in OSCE, when I was revising for it, it was really difficult for me to memorize the, the terminologies. For example, you've got Kilo, uh, Kilonikia and, you know, for example, uh, xanthalasmas, these sort of things. Xanthalasmas are basically lipids around your eyes, lipid formations around your eyes. And, you know, kilonychia is something to do with your nails and how they look like. It's like spoon shape, if I'm not wrong. Um, but basically, these things, I couldn't remember them and Anki helped me so much. However, on top of Anki for OSCE examination, I used this book called OSCE Cases with Mark Scheme. This book is really good because it has, basically, it has different cases which you can do, for example, for history taking and stuff. Um, and it, it also have mark schemes. Like, let's say, for example, let me bring up the cardiology. So let's say, I, I, I couldn't find the cardiology, but th this is how the mark scheme looks like. It tells you exactly what mark you're gonna get for whatever you should be saying and the past mark as well. Um, so it's really helpful. Like once you go through this book, you're going to be completely fine with your OSCE. Um, I personally had problems with my OSCE. I had problems with the, um, the clinical procedures. For example, IM injection came up into my, um, uh, OSCE mark and, um, 
I completely lost it because I didn't actually practice. So there are a few things that I want to tell you as well. In t with regards to your OSCE exam, make sure that you're practicing history taking. I'm personally finding it very difficult to practice at the moment um, with like explaining and presenting. I'm like difficult. I find it very difficult to do those. But with like clinical procedures, try and also practice those. Those are much easier for me. I personally find um, the procedural things easier for me than speech kind of things i don't know why i used to not be like this but i just need to practice more and more um but yeah just practice 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 and i know people sometimes hate to hear this i did but that's the way it works with a physician associate you cannot do anything else really um so yeah that's basically it I'm going to do another video and explain um, how the placements work and I will also do another video on the OSCE clinical procedural things and I'll show you pictures and everything and how I found it in terms of like for example doing blood cultures and you know basic clinical procedures um, but so far guys um, I'm not gonna lie to you it is very intense but it is very much rewarding i personally sometimes just like remember that actually this is what i wanted for years that and i'm doing it now and i should be more grateful for it but because of the amount of stress and work that there is to do i sometimes forget about that but you need to remember that this is basically what it is like you are here for what you wanted and you're gonna be absolutely fine um but guys, another thing I wanted to tell you um, before I forget, another book that is amazing is ECG Made Easy. This book is absolutely the god for ECGs. Um, it's going to be very helpful. It's very much easy like to read and everything. It literally takes like maybe an hour of your day and you can read them. And it has like, you know, for example, atrial fibrillation and you can see the actual thing um you can sh see the actual ecg and it shows you the differences and everything so um this book is really good as well i personally use a lot of zero to finals and geek medics um on top of um basically these books because i found it very useful to make my notes from those websites and also patient info is really good as well because that's for uk and the guidelines are there and you can also go sometimes to the nice uh, guideline um i want to do another video on this actually to so just give you a list but i think i just listed them anyway so the first thing that i recommend is anki and the second thing I, that i recommend that's anki for revision in general you can use it for progress test or oski uh, to make your notes on anki i would suggest you go and watch the tutorials that ali abdul has made on youtube um, and also on skillshare there are plenty of other videos i personally found ali abdul's videos completely Completely, um, useful um, but in terms of where you should make your notes from I would say type every condition that is in the matrix in the zero to finals or geeky medics in Google or anything and patient patient UK so geeky medics zero to finals patient UK and also sometimes sometimes nice guideline is important but it's not sometimes updated you can go on there as well and you can see like basically what the what you should be doing management investigation and treatment and just you will basically copy and paste that into anki and that will be your repetition of the re revising you can even do that with your powerpoints uh from your lectures as well and um that's one thing and then the other thing i recommend is the oski cases with mark schemes this is good for oski exam uh, and it has the mark schemes as I mentioned and also the ECG made easy for your cardiology block and learning all of the ECGs obviously there are so many videos and so many nice um, articles and websites on internet as well where, where you can basically learn different ECGs as well um, I hope this video was useful um, I just felt like I should, I haven't done a video for a very long time and I should have done it. So this is an update 
and hopefully I will do another few videos on placements and anything that comes up hopefully. I hope you guys have a great day and um, yeah, take care. Bye!